just want to show the DIY book chalk up uh, that I made and uh, give you some ideas on the parts that you can use to make your own. This is the traditional Indian charka, and this is the one I made. I used decoupage to decorate it. I used paper napkins and Mod Podge, and you remove all the plies, or you separate all the plies, and then you uh, use the Mod Podge to cover the box. Um, I don't like sanding and painting, so this was a better option for me. There's some free plans that you can get off of uh, Interweave Press, and they're using a cigar box. You can buy a, a pre-made cigar box at Walmart or some of the hobby stores, and it already has all the hinges and everything on it. Everything is really compact, and I'm sure it, it works fine. I didn't try this. I did use a lot of their ideas on um, how to put things together. Um, off these plans, but I did purchase some plans from Mini Tonka Works and just do a search for book charka plans. Um, it, there's a lot of good information in here. It's not very expensive. I believe it was seven dollars or so, a little more than seven dollars for the plans, and they are worth buying. Um, there's some things that were uh, not clear to me, but once I got into it, I sort of understood. Um, they kept it to four pages, so you, you do have to have some woodworking skills. You really need um, a drill press or a scroll saw or some sort of a jigsaw to cut out the wheels for the plans the way these are written. Um, in the material list, he does call for some quarter-inch plywood, um, but later on in the plans, they do mention one eighth inch plywood, which was confusing to me, but I figured it out uh, later. But I used ideas from both the uh, cigar box charka and the, the purchase plans to put mine together. The first one I made, um, I used their uh, instructions in the purchase plans to build a box very similar to the size of the um, original Indian charka. The depth of the box is very similar to the uh, traditional charka. I cracked the wood, I made so many mistakes that this one was going to be a no-go for me, but it was a great learning experience. Also, it wasn't clear on where to put the supports for the spindles, and I totally messed those up. But um, the wheels, instead of cutting wood for them, I used my Cricut Maker to cut out uh, layers of cardboard. And it made a perfect circle in the middle. Uh, my drill press skills are not great. So this was a pretty good idea, but it's um, a lot of gluing and waiting. So um, I'm going to point out differences as... Uh, as I go through this to, to show um, um, what I did use and what I didn't use. When I made this one, I went and purchased these uh, pre-made boxes from uh, Michaels, I believe and um, they are quite a bit bigger than the traditional charka and they're a lot deeper but what I like about them is the walls are a lot thicker so but it kept me uh, from totally using the plans I had to make some adjustments to the height of all the components that go on the inside so that they would clear the top edge of the the box but if you plan ahead um, I think this is a better option. It was easier for me, but if your woodworking skills are good, you can build your own box. I did originally cut out the wood um, according to his plans. My wood was a little bit thicker. He called for quarter inch uh, ply, birch plywood, which is actually a little bit thinner than a quarter inch. I believe it's like three sixteenths or something like that in real, you know, in reality, once the wood is planed. Um, these were a little bit thicker. I ended up not using them for various reasons, and I ended up using the Cricut Maker, and, and this was my uh, 
my first cut out. I don't ha uh, have a jigsaw I don't like using. I use a scroll saw to cut out these circles. So um, you, can, uh, you can use whatever you want to for your wheels, but you need to plan it out ahead of time so you'll know the, the, the math on figuring out all the thickness of everything when you start putting things together. So um, here's the two boxes put together and I put a latch on there and then um, I hinged the two boxes together to make my box. It's quite a lot, uh, quite a bit bigger than the um, traditional Indian charcoal on the inside as well. I do like having all the components up close to the edge here. I like spinning off of the edge of the box right here because I can have my spindle stick out as far as I need to to be able to spin. Um, this one has everything right down the middle which you lose a lot of your length of your uh, spindle because it has to stick out from here all the way out to the edge. But it does work. But you can lay it out uh, whichever way you want. So this wheel does not have to be in line with this one. This wheel can line up to, let me take everything out. I use little rubber bands and hooks to keep things from moving around when um, it's being moved. This wheel can be put anywhere in line from here to here, but this wheel needs to go in pretty much a straight line from this wheel to your spindle. So that's one thing that you have to uh, consider when you're laying it out. Um, what I used in my final project uh, was some wheels that I turned on the lathe. I'm very new to the lathe. Um, I just bought one not long ago. So I'm learning how to do some things and you'll see my groove is not directly in the middle. But, um, you know, I'm getting better. And so I turned a piece of wood that I believe was about six inches wide and uh, about a half inch thick. And um, on this one, I glued two of those pieces together, and then I turned the smaller pulley or the, the group, and then the, um, the larger one. I think this is about three inches. And this uh, should have been about an inch, but I stopped when I thought it was good enough, and then I, I cut this to a depth so that I could still insert some sort of a bearing. For the spindles, I used some knitting needles that I bought on eBay. These are double-pointed knitting needles. Uh, these are two millimeter. You can go a little thicker if you want to, um, or thinner. But they're, these are pretty sturdy, but they are hollow. I'm not sure what they're made of. But I did buy some Susan Bates um, knitting needles, and I think these are aluminum. But they're real, when you start spinning real fast, this is so flexible, it just wobbles uh, in there, and I, I hate that. It, it spins okay, but I don't like that wobble. You can also cut a um, coat hanger and sharpen the edge of it. I haven't finished this one. Uh, this is a little rough on the ends. Uh, I don't like having to grind it, but it's very sturdy and similar to the um, Indian um, spindles. I've got all of my spindles secured in here with these little rainbow loom rubber bands and it works really well to hold everything in place when I'm carrying this thing around. This is an Indian spindle. It's a lot shorter on this end and um, they have a little disc in here with a piece of leather. I ended up putting a rubber band on there to keep it from moving around. But it's very sturdy, doesn't wobble, and it's very sharp. I really like spinning with these. 
but um, I don't know how they make theirs, but um, or what this is made of. On the cigar box plans, they used, um, I don't know if you could see it, but they used some buttons glued back to back that are slightly beveled so that you can get a little pulley in there. Um, and the, it would be these two pieces back to back, but you need some sort of a groove in there so your drive belt will um, be able to drive the spindle. These are um, rubber faucet washers. You can use the smallest that you can find. Uh, usually is a double, uh, double lot, but I was able to find actually some that were even smaller that were triple lot, and those are also glued back to back. I have a piece of rubber um, O-ring material in the middle to keep the um, needle from moving around. This one, I'm not actually like this method better. It's got a little wooden dowel in there. Um, I didn't do too well centering it, but it works well. But you can glue that in. And once you know how far from the end you, you want this, you can glue this in place. You want this uh, washer to move back and forth freely on there so that you can adjust it on the machine. But this one can be stationary. I used in the middle of my washer is a uh, rubber grommet and um, this hole is a little bit tinier. I believe this one's a quarter inch diameter and you have to get it started and then just work it into there to where it's really snug. If you use a washer with a bigger hole this will just kind of move around. I tried it on a, um, a washer that had a quarter inch hole in the middle and it just moved around in there. I didn't like it. Um, you want to keep your washer about uh, an inch in diameter. I made this one. I thought it would be nice to have a bigger um, base so that I could put more yarn on the spindle, but um, it interferes with uh, rubbing against the, the maidens when it's, when it's up here. It's, it's leaning and it's just, it turned out too big. So keep that in mind. And also you'll see in the center I've reduced that hole and um, how I did that was, let me find it. This is some stuff I already had. It's, uh, kids use it to do paracord crafts and things like that. And it's a little flexible hollow plastic tube. And I cut a piece of that and inserted it into the middle of this grommet so that it would make that hole smaller. And then I was able to slide my um, knitting needle into that hole and it would hold but I can still move the washer around where I want it to be. The plans that I purchased called for skate bearings and they would probably be very nice to use if you used uh, his plans on building the actual wheels so that um, they would this would fit on there. These won't work with mine because I think that they would be too big. So um, anyway, these these are not very expensive. You have to buy more than one when you buy them, but uh, I think you need two for the um, the purchase plans. What I used um, was a bronze bearing with a flange on the bottom. These are actually a smaller diameter, but this is the only one I had to show. But for the bottom here, I used the, uh, the one with a flange on it. But since this was an inch thick, the, um, the bearings that I bought didn't go all the way through. So I bought one without a flange, and then I cut it off to, to make it all the way through the depth of this, this wheel. So plan this ahead of time before you start cutting holes and things so that you'll know which bearings you're going to be using, what kind of post you're going to be using, and all the components that are going to work together. Um, and this one, the um, bearing only needed to be a half inch, 
so I ended up inserting the bearing in there and, and cutting it down to, um, to not stick out of the top. And for these posts right here, I used, um, I think this is a quarter inch bolt, and um, it was a threaded bolt. It had some threads on it, which I ended up cutting the threads off, but I made sure that there was, a, was enough of this post without the threads left over so that it would make it all the way through uh, the thickness of my my wheel and my um, pulley on the bottom. And I used the same post for this one also. And I cut it down to the size of this wheel. It doesn't matter if it sticks up a little bit. Uh, on the original plans, the purchase plans, he has um, these posts with the threads still on them. I ended up putting Teflon tape on there to, to uh, quieten it up a little bit. But he has that sticking up so that you can put a bolt on there and lock all this down when you're getting ready to move this thing around. Now on the Maidens, I kind of used my traditional um, charka to look at how they did their maidens and they actually made their own hinge and they have a spring inside of there which I'm not capable of doing that so I eliminated that part of it. Uh, they also have a little kickstand on the back to keep that upright. I didn't do that. I like um, what I did on this one. I kind of stuck to the plans except for on this one I added a spring to the back to give a little back pressure on it. I didn't add any support in the front. You really should not allow this to go uh, too far forward. And on his plans, or I don't know who wrote the plans, but on those plant purchase plans, they tell you how to fix this to keep it from going too far forward. Um, one thing I did change is I added an angle to this so that the spindle sits in at an angle toward the front of the machine. So since this plan is so um, so far to the middle by the time the tip of the spindle comes out, you have to really figure out if you're going to put your your layout with this straight down the middle, you're going to have to figure out how, how deep your angle is so that it doesn't hit the front of the box here. So I had to do some trial and error to, to make this one work with this box. Get this one out of the way. Now, I, um, the reason I did the angle is because if you look at the back of the traditional charka, theirs is angled. So I, I found that to work better for spinning. So on the one I did here, I made so many mistakes with the hinges. I don't have a lot of strength, so I just, the hinges were a, a problem for me. So I ended up cutting out a rectangle. I figured out all the dimensions that I, I needed, and I cut out a rectangle. And then I, um, I drilled a hole straight through. I marked where I wanted this hinge to be and then I drilled a hole. And then I came back with my scroll saw and I cut out this little hinge idea here. And you have to file down all these edges, and I probably could file down a little bit more so that this will turn. But it also gives you the support you need. It, does, it doesn't allow it to go too far forward, and it gives you that right angle. I glued some pieces of tin, it looks like this, um, to the sides because my um, spindles are made with rubber pulleys and they would drag against the wood. So I needed it to be more slippery. So I put some on the outside edge and some on the inside edge and also on this inside edge. I just stuck it down with some uh, double-sided tape. You don't need any on the back side because there's nothing going to rub there. And I um, 
I like this idea here because and I'll show you in a little bit once this is all set up. You can fine tune this and then you can set your tension on your drive band with this. I'm just going to take everything apart so you can kind of see the layout. Um, I've put various hooks in places to help me to tie things down. This is my little non uh, skid mat that I use underneath the machine when I'm using it and some fiber in my drive bands. And I'll take this wheel out. This wheel is where I had I had it secured here in this corner. And these hooks are working out really nice. Just take some of this clutter out of here. Um, I think I already mentioned what I use for these posts. I glued down uh, these washers here. It gives it some extra stability. You can use um, threaded inserts in the wood. You can find those at um, your hardware store to insert these um, bolts in there. Um, I think I just sandwiched mine in. There's a. This is all glued down, so I can't move it, but there's a couple of layers here. Um, this one I added a washer because my uh, wheel was not clearing the edge of this wood so that washer made just enough different uh, uh, height so that I could uh, rise above this edge if I wanted my wheel to come out a little farther. Uh, you don't want to raise it up too much because then it won't line up with, um, with everything else. So let me take this off. Um, this was an added thing that was not in the original plans and the only reason I'm using a different size bolt here as, as this one is because these are what I had on, on hand. If I did this differently next time I would put a, uh, an insert in there with a threaded insert so that I could not have to go through all this gluing this down and everything but I was working on this late didn't want to run to the I couldn't run to the hardware store and I was wanting to get finished so the size of these doesn't really matter other than um, you have to be sure that uh, you're going to have some clearance for the wheel so what I found when I used this wing nut is when I had all this on here the wheel was rubbing on the wing nut so I ended up filing it down so that it wouldn't rub and I do like this bigger wing nut because it's easy for my fingers to just reach under there and grab it and turn it the one on the traditional Tarka Charka is a little tiny wing nut. It hurts my fingers. When I'm trying to make some adjustments, I reach under, it hurts, and there it's really hard to grip and turn. So there are some advantages to using a bigger wing nut, but you do have to make sure that none of this sticks up so far that it hinders uh, either the drive band or uh, the bottom of this um, this area. And you can see this is not very wide so if you had this too big all of that would end up rubbing and touching so it's probably better to go with one slightly smaller like this one but again this is what I had on hand. Um, as far as the layout of it I um, made all my components and then I stuck them down to the bottom of the box with some double-sided, some uh, really heavy-duty double-sided tape. And then I tried everything out to see if it was spinning. And then I made marks on the bottom of the box to where I wanted to put these, all of these components before I glued them down. And uh, don't leave that double-sided tape on too long because it really sticks. Um, really hard and it's it's almost impossible to get it out later. Okay, on the drive band I ended up using um, a diameter of 0.125 
for the o-ring stock for this and you just cut it to the size you need and um, you glue it together with some um, super glue and it's it's really strong uh, for the drive band from the pulley uh, from the accelerator wheel to the spindle I ended up using some of this jewelry cord it's elastic and um, it's really strong you just melt the ends with a candle or a, um, a wood burner or something like that and then you just stick them together uh, you probably could use super glue too I just haven't tried it I found this thinner one um, actually holds its um, it doesn't stretch out as much as this clear one for some reason I tried this one first because I thought it was a better size and it grew overnight and I had twice I had to cut into the band and shorten it and remelt it together because it just it was just growing and so this one I don't know why this one works better but um, this is the um, the one I ended up using for my uh, drive band I tried also a thinner o-ring thinking that this would be nice to a nice size to drive uh, the spindle but it was too thick and um, it was too much pressure. So, so far this is working out um, good and all you have to do is carry around a little extra cord with you and a cigarette lighter. If you get in a bind you can make a band. So I'm going to put all this together and just kind of show how it works and uh, then take it all down just to show how um, you close up when you're done. Okay, you take your accelerator wheel and your large wheel. Get this band out of here. And then you connect the band to this lower pulley. Just kind of tighten that down a little bit. But first you really should clean these and oil them. You can use sewing machine oil or Vaseline or something like that, but that's um, probably going to need to be oiled every time you use it. Sometimes I'll just kind of drop the oil in there so that it will coat the, the inside of this bearing along with the post. And then you put this in the big wheel like that. So that's obviously too loose. So I'm going to kind of get it where I'm used to putting it and tighten it down. This one needs to be pretty snug. And I like overlapping just a little. I found that um, that was my spinning position on my wheel. I have my little handle in here which is just a little wooden part that I bought at the craft store. This I believe is a 3 8 inch dowel that I put a, um, a smaller dowel inside of this one and drilled a hole into the wheel and glued that down. And this is a little hard on the fingers here, just doing that. So I found it easier to have something that will swivel. And um, that might be a little too tight. But anyway, you can also use a cabinet knob there or something else. Any, anything will work as long as you find it comfortable. But that's really the last thing I did and I also taped it down and glued, uh, stuck it down with some tape to try it out first before I started drilling holes in this. Now this band goes to the spindle and I'm going to first use the Indian one so I can show you how it fits in the, um, the Maiden. When you're using these um, Indian uh, spindles. Some of them are really short on this end, so that makes a difference in the width of this because when this rocks back and forth in there, it'll come out of that little string bearing that I have in there. It still works fine, but um, I find I have another purchased uh, Indian um, spindle that I bought from a lady online and the end of it is a little bit longer and it does work better if it's longer. But for my homemade ones they fit in there like that and they don't come out. And I have enough room in there for this to move around like it needs to 
and um, that's why I put the little metal pieces in there so that they, when it rubs and turns in there that it doesn't uh, hinder the movement of it. So when you first put an empty spindle on here, you're going to want to shove the um, back piece here, this washer, you're going to want to put it a little bit closer to um, the spindle, but you don't want it rubbing on here because then you won't be able to spin. So I'm going to take that out. I'm just going to kind of position it just a little bit just to get started. Just kind of snug it up a little bit and then I'm going to get my spindle and then you just loop your band around the um, pulley place that. You need to oil these string bearings, put a little oil on that string and um, this, like I showed you before, the spindle just rests on top of those strings. It keeps it from rubbing against the wood. And I'm not going to worry about the tension just yet. And then this band goes in here. If you have this band going across the top here into the pulley, you're going to turn, you're going to spin clockwise. If you want to spin counterclockwise, um, it needs to be this, this way with this band lower and this one higher. But I spin clockwise, so I'm going to put it on like that. And then I'm going to slide this. This band doesn't need to be real tight. This one needs to be more snug than, than this one does. So you just kind of test it to see if it spins in both directions easily and just tweak it and then once you get it I've got mine angled just a little bit here I find that that works best for me so once you get it where you want it just tighten everything down and then I'm going to tighten this one down and what you want is a pretty much straight line between this one and that one and then a straight line from this one to that one depending on how you lay it out you could actually when you build your box you can put your your big wheel over here it doesn't really matter so um, just test it all out uh, with some temporary connections and um, before you actually glue everything down. So at this point I'm ready to spin. I'm not going to actually spin because I'll probably mess up on camera. I'm still not really good with the long draw. But you, you can see when you, um, you probably can't see my hand out here, but uh, let's see if I can get it farther in. When you're holding this at an angle, you'll hear that little tick, 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 you know, and that's, that's putting some twist in the yarn. And then you back up and then wind on. But um, you would be using some sort of cotton. This is mostly for cotton. So that's how you put everything together. Um, I have not built a um, um, what do you call it, a uh, swift like they have on the Indian charkas. They have these rods that fit into this little wooden piece here sits on top of the wheel and these rods ride in there like that. There's four of them and you skein your yarn. You just turn it by hand. I do have room in my box to add something like that but I can't figure out how how I'm going to be able to to bend the rods. I know there's rod benders out there that you can buy, but I don't know if I want to purchase one just for one-time use. But on my box, they would fit like this in this little crack here. And then I would secure them somehow on the, on the end. And if I built this little thing, I would probably install it here and secure it inside here to store it. Um, I have room for storage here, which you have to keep in mind when you're uh, planning storage inside your box, that nothing like this little wall here should not 
be um, you should have a good more than a quarter inch depth here because this wheel sticks out a quarter of an inch and when you close things up it's going to hit on this so that's another thing I did when I cut these little pieces of wood I stuck them down with some double-sided tape and I tried closing the box to see where things were hitting so I ended up figuring out that my best layout for storage was to um, take this wheel completely off and I put a couple of little eye bolts and I opened them up so that I could put my rubber band in. I put one in each corner, caddy corner, and then I just set this in here upside down. You can put a piece of felt. I may glue a piece of felt in the bottom there to put this on and um, just hook it on like that. Um, wherever the hooks are that are going to be on the bottom, this plywood is really thin so I, you can use the command tape to stick these hooks down or you can glue them down if you know that's where you want them to permanently be. Um, and the way I secure this one, I put a couple of hooks here to put the, to store the handle so it doesn't wobble around in the box. On the Indian charka, the um, the little wooden handle just sits in a corner and it does move around in there when you close the box up. So I found that mine needs to be turned like this. So I um, I hook it in there. I figured out where this was hitting and where the safest place, when I close it up, where the safest place to position that is because that's glued on, I can't take it off. Then I secure everything else. And this one, I have some hooks. Let's see if you can see it in the camera. I have a couple of command hooks in there. And I'm using these little rainbow loom um, rubber bands. Move that down a little bit. And then I hook that on over there to keep that from flopping around. I um, got rainbow, the little tiny rubber bands on these, also the rainbow rubber bands. And then I just position all of my spindles. This one needs to turn that way. This one can go that way. And then I just hook on the rubber bands. It might take a little bit longer than the Indian charka, but it works. And then I, I usually carry a few extra rubber bands in a little bag in case those break. And then I'll put my fiber and my, um, my drive band in a little bag. And I take my non-skid mat, and then I have a hook here and another hook here. Um, I might glue this one in because there's a lot of pressure with this rubber band, and it, it does pop off with the with the command tape. So. Um, I'll probably, I like the position of that one, so I'll probably go ahead and glue that one down. And then you just secure, uh, make sure everything's secure, and this thing is ready to close up. So hopefully that will give you some ideas on what you can use to make your own um, box charka or book charka.